Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. The Democratic primary race is heating up in the days before the key New Hampshire primary. On Wednesday, Secretary Hillary Clinton was challenged about her vote in support of the Iraq war when she was a senator. Let's take a listen to her response. You know, I did make a mistake, and I admitted that I made a mistake, and in large measure, uh, that mistake really uh, arose from uh, the, uh, the Bush administration's approach uh, to what they thought they could accomplish in Iraq, the very explicit appeal that President Bush made before announcing the invasion that getting that vote would be a strong piece of leverage in order to finish the inspections. And he made, he, he made that comment. And the UN inspector, uh, Hans Blick, said, give us the time, we will find out. Give us the hammer over their head, namely the vote, and we will be able to find out what they still have in terms of WMD. But how much of what Secretary Clinton just said was actually true? Now joining us to fact check Secretary Clinton is our guest, Stephen Zunas. He's a professor of politics and international studies at the University of San Francisco. Thank you so much for joining us, Stephen. My pleasure to be with you. So, Stephen, you just heard the clip we played um, from last night. Um, CNN even fact-checked what Secretary Clinton had to say and said what she said was false. Can you just break down for us why is what she just said a false statement? Well, first of all, Hans Blick, who was the head of the, of the United Nations Special Commission on Iraq, on SCOM, did not endorse that resolution. He did say that the uh, United Nations and uh, and passing new resolutions on the inspection regime, you know, should uh, you know back up that with uh, uh, the threat of force. Indeed, UN Security Council uh, Resolution 1441 uh, did use very strong language, uh, you know, that implied uh, that they would consider the United Nations Security Council would consider uh, the use of military force if uh, Iraq did not comply. But that was the UN. This was not, he was not asking the United States to uh, threaten that unilaterally. Uh, furthermore, uh, there were a number of resolutions authorizing force before uh, the, uh, the, the, the U.S. Senate. Uh, one was the Levin Amendment, sponsored by uh, Senator Carl Levin in Michigan, which would have authorized force, but only if Saddam Hussein refused to cooperate with the inspectors and the United Nations and found him therefore uh, in material uh, breach and authorized force. Uh, Hillary Clinton voted against that resolution. Instead, she voted for a Republican sponsored measure, which essentially uh, gave President Bush the author uh, unprecedented authority to launch a war against Iraq at the time and circumstances of his own choosing. And uh, when he did launch that war uh, and in March, uh, five months later, UN inspectors had been in the country for months and, gave, and they had unfettered access. Uh, the uh, Iraqi regime was cooperating completely, and Bush invaded anyway. And Hillary Clinton didn't mention a single word in opposition. She didn't say, oh, wait, this is just to give the inspectors, uh, uh, you know, get, give you leverage to get the inspectors back in. Since they're back in, you shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. No, she supported the, the decision to invade 100 percent, even after uh, the uh, uh, long after the inspectors had returned and were engaged on fettered inspections and weren't finding anything. Yeah, and this isn't the first time Secretary Clinton has had to defend her Iraq vote. Let's talk about how what she just said um, compares or contrasts with her justification for the vote back in 2002. Let's take a listen to what she had to say back then. In the four years since the inspectors left, intelligence reports show that Saddam Hussein has worked to rebuild his chemical and biological weapons stock his missile delivery capability, and his nuclear program. He has also given aid, comfort, and sanctuary to terrorists, including Al-Qaeda members. It is clear, however, that if left unchecked, Saddam Hussein will continue to increase his capacity to wage biological and chemical warfare, and will keep trying to develop nuclear weapons. Should he succeed in that endeavor, he could alter the political and security landscape of the Middle East, which as we know all too well, affects American security. 
This is a very difficult vote. This is probably the hardest decision I've ever had to make. Any vote that might lead to war should be hard. But I cast it with conviction. She cast it with conviction, and we all know how the story goes. There were no weapons of mass destruction found in Iraq. So what do you make of the, uh, Clinton's argument back then about why she decided to vote for the Iraq war? Totally disingenuous. Uh, virtually all the data that was made available for members of Congress at that time has been declassified. I have read it, and it is very, very weak. Uh, indeed, at leading up to the war, I was among a number of strategic analysts that provided uh, her office with detailed empirical uh, uh, research that challenged the Bush administration's claims. Uh, the, the idea that the, these, that the, UN, uh, the UN inspectors were saying all these things is baloney. The International Atomic Energy Agency, in fact, explicitly said there's absolutely no evidence that Iraq uh, had a, a, a nuclear program anymore. Uh, the chief UNSCOM weapons inspector, Scott Ritter, had testified that while he couldn't rule out Iraq having some old warheads, you know, from you know, uh, decades earlier, you know, lying around somewhere, that they didn't have any offensive military capability. They'd achieved, for all intents and purposes, at least qualitative uh, disarmament. Meanwhile, virtually nobody took seriously the idea uh, that the uh, uh, decidedly secular uh, uh, a regime of Saddam Hussein, uh, the Ba'athist Baath regime there, was in all, any way collaborating or supporting or giving sanctuary to the Salafi extremist uh, Al-Qaeda who considered Saddam an infidel, an apostate, and a traitor to Islam. Indeed, the Department of Defense, you know, uh, that Hillary Clinton actually was the only Democratic senator to, to make that particular claim. Uh, so you know there, and it also uh, it also since it's been revealed, she didn't even read uh, the more detailed national intelligence estimate, uh, which actually cast doubts on some of the uh, Bush administration's claims. So uh, this idea that there's somehow this consensus that everybody thought they had weapons of mass destruction, these missiles, and the support for Al Qaeda, a nuclear program, is, is baloney. Uh, mm. the, the intel, the the, the uh, uh, independent arms control analyst. Uh, we're saying, no, this, this, is, this is ridiculous. Don't believe this stuff. But she instead uh, decided to side with the administration. All right. Let's fast forward to today. As we know, Clinton is running to become the uh, Democratic nominee. Um, last night in the town hall, she was challenged on her, quote, interventionist foreign policy during CNN's Democratic town hall. So I want to get your take um, on what she had to say. Let's just quickly take a listen to that clip. As senator and as secretary of state, you have a history of interventionist foreign policy that is troubling to many Democratic voters, including myself. As a voter who is opposed to the United States being the world's policeman, can you assure me that as president you would not expand our military involvement abroad? No, I can't, Michael. I mean, I, I'd like to be able to say I could, but here's what I can say. I have learned and have been you know, really in the crucible of making a lot of hard decisions over the last uh, years. And military force must always be a last resort, not a first choice. That is one of the biggest differences between me and the Republicans. So, Stephen, what do you make of her arguments? Well, this, this idea that the, the United States needs to be uh, increasingly interventionist in the region. I mean, <laughs> President Obama has bombed seven countries in the greater Middle East since he came to, uh, to office, and he's, she's criticized him for not bombing enough. Uh, she was the most outspoken hawk uh, within the uh, uh, top uh, echelons of the uh, of, uh, foreign policy decision making when she was Secretary of State, pushing for the intervention in Libya, which obviously didn't go very well. Uh, she was uh, not that supportive of diplomatic outreach to Iran to try to resolve the the uh, nuclear uh, standoff. Uh, she's you know criticized Obama for not intervening in in uh, uh, Syria enough, implying that somehow led to the rise of ISIS when virtually everybody recognizes that the rise of ISIS was a direct consequence uh, of the uh, U.S. invasion occupation of. Uh, Iraq uh, that uh, uh, Senator Clinton supported and uh, uh, Barack Obama opposed in part because, as he explicitly said, it would stir up uh, extremist Islamist groups. Uh, so, and, uh, and, and we've seen everything from her support for uh, 
uh, the uh, right-wing Netanyahu government and Israel, and including uh, the defense of war crimes that Senator Sanders and the Obama administration uh, have, have condemned. I mean, she, she's definitely uh, uh, one of the more hawkish uh, uh, members uh, of the uh, uh, Democratic Party leadership. Mm -hmm. And it's ironic at a time when polls show Democrats are more skeptical of intervention than, than ever, that she is uh, uh, you know, now the, the, the front runner uh, for the party's nomination for president. Yeah, and we can't talk about Clinton without talking about Sanders. How does Clinton's foreign policy stance compare to Sanders' position? And he and let's let's lay out some of that position. He says he would mobilize countries like Saudi Arabia to take on ISIS, and Saudi Arabia would be essentially working with other regional countries like Iran. Most people know this. Iran and Saudi Arabia, they're not quite good friends. So if Saudi Arabia, which has been documented to have been providing aid to extremists in Syria, how could they actually be the ones to help fight ISIS? Do you feel like Bernie's platform is sort of missing the boat here in bringing a viable foreign policy plan that is in the interests of everyday people in Syria and across the region? I, I'm very skeptical, actually, of Senator Sanders' idea of, of mobilizing these uh, autocratic uh, uh, Arab dictatorships. Uh, they, indeed, are part of the problem. They're, they're part of what has stirred up uh, this kind of extremist activity. But at least he's saying this should be a regional matter and not one for the uh, United States to take the lead in, in intervening, as Senator Clinton uh, has, has been doing. Uh, there's no real good answer. Uh, to what to do about this uh, monster that the uh, U.S. invasion of Iraq has created. Uh, I am, I'm, and indeed, I am skeptical of what Senator Sanders says, but uh, I, I find uh, uh, Senator Clinton, uh, when you, especially if you look at her history on these issues, uh, far, more da far more dangerous of the two. Okay, but folks would say, you know, no one is talking about political solution. There is some viable options here. Let's get Russia to the table. Russia, who's supporting the Assad regime. Let's start. Let's stop making this um, uh, a, a condition of any sort of negotiations that Assad must go. Just some basic, maybe even a ceasefire. Can we even start there? Um, why is no one even really talking about these possible solutions? <laughs> Well, as the old saying goes, if the only thing in your toolbox is a hammer, pretty soon everything starts looking like a nail. And given that our incredibly bloated uh, military budget uh, that is, is used uh, uh, you know, primarily for foreign uh, intervention, uh, we have neglected the very important diplomatic uh, work. Uh, and we have uh, failed to recognize that the more the United States has armed the Middle East, the more the United States has intervened the Middle e in the Middle East, the less secure we've become. And we have uh, failed to uh, recognize uh, that, that, that reality. All right, Stephen Zunis, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. All right, and we will be discussing this topic and many more campaign issues in New Hampshire. We will be bringing you live coverage of primaries starting on Monday, February 8th. So please be sure to watch and donate so we can keep bringing you the real news. Thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.